five things just happen. It's been approximately one year and eight months since I was retrenched. By retrenched, I mean I was walked into what I thought was a meeting about finances and essentially told that our magazine, the one that I was running at the time, was shut down. And we're not all gonna sit in circle Indian style, are we? <laughs> Get out. This is an environment of welcoming and you should just get the hell out of here. We were given the option to stay on and we'd be re-assimilated, sort of matrix style, back into the corporate machine. But instead I thought, you know what, I'm picking up a camera and I'm going my own way and doing what I believe in and that's where I am now. Nobody wants to be at the helm of a magazine, I don't think, or any business that's closed. Um, you feel responsible, you feel like it's your fault, you feel like you could have done things better. But the fact of the matter is, it was my second rodeo with this particular company. And yeah, I thought I'd rather make the cut now and head out on my own. So here we are today at the Panda Bomb Studios. It's a small business, but it's mine. Be it ever so humble. I'm having the time of my life. So here are my five things that I learned when I went through my retrenchment. Number one, you learn who your friends are. And I don't mean this in a bad way, like, oh, you know, you weren't there for me when I needed you sort of a thing. But people who you thought were friendly acquaintances turn out to be very valuable friends indeed. People who you know only from social media or via the network have maybe just read your name in print suddenly open doors for you. I will forever be grateful to those rare individuals that were there for me. Number two, it's not a holiday, you work harder. I decided on that fateful day in December 2016, just before Christmas, not a good time to be retrenched, by the way. I will never work for a big company ever again, or a boss. I started my own company and now I work harder than ever before. Mainly because, yeah, there needs to be cash in the bank to pay bills and buy stuff but also because I enjoy what I do so much now that I'm happy to do it often and work at it whenever a moment arises. Number three, you learn so many new skills. When I left Media24, I was an editor and a motoring writer. I knew how to tell a great story that involved cars. I also did some graphic design work on the side, but that was basically it. Now, however, I can write, design, take photos, shoot videos, edit videos, build websites, build RSVP systems, write press releases, create social media calendars, develop content strategies, and so much more. I've taught myself many of these skills through YouTube. Seriously, this platform, this platform, it's a treasure trove of tutorials, information, pretty much anything you need to take that next step. Number four, everyone you know has or potentially is a connection. No, really. Everyone knows someone who knows someone who can help you with something. I've learned that leaning on your social circles and your connections more is very valuable. Sometimes the end for a job is who you know. Use it when you can. Use it wisely. Number five, invest in the good stuff. I knew early after being retrenched that while I could rely on my writing and designing and content skills for many things, I really want to hone my videography talents and make a living from that. For this, however, you need the right equipment. Over the last 20 months, I've spent more money than I want to admit on gear. You can't show up on a shoot with a glitchy or old camera. You need the right tools and you need the best tools to help you succeed. Every time I can afford it, I level up a little bit more just so I can continue to give the best service to my clients. I have, of course, learned more than five lessons during this time, but these are the key ones I think will help get you started and put you in the right mindset straight away. It's a tough time right now if you're in the magazine world especially, and you might find yourself in a situation where you've got to forcibly transition to the next phase in your life. 
and maybe this isn't the one for you but it's out there just apply yourself just give it some thought what is it that you want to do and start there and finally i've really enjoyed being my own boss it's not a holiday like i say you tend to work harder you're in control of your own fate your own time i can get up late if i want to i can ride my bike i can go for a run i can go for the drive i can do whatever i want as long as i've met my goals and my targets and my success and i'm happy and i am i genuinely think society needs to encourage kids more to be their own entrepreneurs one day but that's for a future video i've got something in the pipelines over there as well wait bonus thing bonus thing this one is important don't be afraid to work for free yeah exposure i mean i'm from the i've got a design background so i know the joke associated with working for free working for exposure now exposure can't pay the bills and that's all true but don't be afraid to work for someone with someone that down the road might be able to be in a position to help you out with a good job a, a, a interesting project be in the room with people that you love to work with by whatever means with that in mind don't do work for someone with the expectation of getting something in return down the line it doesn't work that way pay it forward Thank you so much for watching. If you're a fan of the Panda Bomb journey so far and want to see what else we do, um, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, the old YouTube, and yeah, enjoy the journey.